while we're on the fun with nerves theme, because um, we did the friendly nerve last week, there's another nerve nearby us. Now, I realise there's a few nerves here we should talk about. It's a nerve that does, again, pop up in polite conversation. It's a nerve that innovates the larynx, and yet it runs into the thorax. It's very strange. There are some good embryological reasons for this, um, but we should have a look at the path of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and it's different on both sides. Talk about where it goes, what it does, and why it runs where it runs. Certainly the little why of embryological, not the big why of evolutionary or even maybe uh, theological. <laughs> By the way, I am, um, I'm gonna try and not speak really fast, but I'm in a bit of a rush, because believe it or not, of all the labs we've got, they're all being used this afternoon by students. Guess what? Yes, there are exams coming up. So if I've got a different shirt in, um, in, in the end of the video, it means I've been interrupted and had to do it again on a different date. All right, um, so the recurrent laryngeal nerve, as the name suggests, innovates the larynx. So the larynx, I'm using it to make sounds. There are a number of cartilages which make a space and we have the vocal cords which I pass air over to make them vibrate and to produce sound. The muscles, or the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, essentially move the vocal cords. So when you're breathing easily, they're a little bit apart. When you're breathing deeply, they're wide apart. When you're talking, they're almost together. And when you're holding your breath or just before you're about to cough, <coughs> when you build up a bit of pressure, the vocal cords are pushed tightly together to close the airway, you build up some pressure, and then they're open and you cough. And that's very important in clearing the airway. Um, recurrent laryngeal nerve. So it's called recurrent because it loops essentially from the thorax back up to the larynx that's up here. But if it's called the recurrent laryngeal nerve then there must be others. So there is a superior laryngeal nerve which gives off internal and external laryngeal nerve branches and they innovate bits of the larynx. But the recurrent laryngeal nerve innovates all of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx those are those that are moving the vocal cords, really, um, except for the cricothyroid muscle. Um, and it's also sensory to the mucosa inferior to the vocal cords and also secretor motor to the, the mucus secreting glands in the mucosa there, right? So that's what the recurrent laryngeal nerve does. It's important in speech um, and in the airway. Now, all of those laryngeal nerves are branches of the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. And cranial nerve 10 drops out of the skull and runs down the neck with the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. And it runs down and it goes into the thorax. And what it's really trying to do is it's trying to get to the esophagus and it'll follow the esophagus down into the abdomen and carry parasympathetic innovation to various parts of the body. It innovates stuff as it goes past as well, right? So the vagus nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve then is a branch of the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is already going to work its way down into the thorax, so the recurrent laryngeal nerve branches from it as it passes into the thorax. Okay, so we've got the, the thorax and we've got a bit of the neck here, so if I take the lungs out, we can see we've got a number of nerves coming down here. So we've got the phrenic nerve, which we talked about last week, the brachial plexus is coming out here. And then we've got the, uh, this is the vagus nerve here. So it's running down with the blood vessels. Here's the common carotid artery. And it's running down and running around the arch of the aorta. And as I said, it's trying to get back to the esophagus. Look, here's the esophagus here. There's the left vagus nerve. There's the right vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is going to do various things. We're not talking about the vagus nerve today. Great as it is. Now, the vasculature is different on either side, isn't it? Um, of course, if I take it off, I'm taking it off with the heart. But hopefully you've seen that the arch of the aorta arches to the left and posteriorly. And from the arch of the aorta, we have the common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. 
whereas the brachiocephalic trunk passes over to the right and then gives off the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. Um, and then we have the pulmonary trunk giving off left and right pulmonary arteries and we have pulmonary veins going into the heart and whatnot. Why is all this important? Well, what we see is, we see, uh, and normally we only see, only see this on the cadaver, it's very difficult to see on models, but what we can see is, we can see this nerve here. And as the vagus nerve is descending, it gives off the recurrent laryngeal nerve here. So the recurrent laryngeal nerve is posterior to the brachiocephalic vein or the subclavian vein or whatever wherever we're at here. And it loops around the recurrent, the right recurrent laryngeal nerve loops around the right subclavian artery and passes back to the trachea and then runs up with the trachea back to the larynx up here and innervates the larynx. The recurrent laryngeal nerve then becomes the inferior laryngeal nerve. It's not always referred to as the inferior laryngeal nerve, but that's that, that's where we have the superior and inferior bits. The recurrent laryngeal nerve becomes the inferior laryngeal nerve as it gets to the larynx. So on the right side, it loops around the subclavian artery. Whereas on the left side, look, here's the arch of the aorta here. This is the, the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve with the common carotid artery, again, passing uh, posterior to the veins, between the veins and the arteries, and look, running down, again, it's still running with the, the common carotid artery and the subclavian artery, where it meets, meets the arch of the aorta, and then, as I said, it's going to run down to the, the esophagus, but we can see that this nerve looping around the arch of the aorta is the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the left side. And that then runs back up to the trachea and back up to the, the larynx on the left side. So the left recurrent laryngeal nerve loops around the arch of the aorta. And there's a little bit more to it than that because we can see this structure here. There's the arch of the aorta and there's the pulmonary trunk. And we've got this little connecting thing, this bit of connective tissue here. That is the ligamentum arteriosum in the adult. In the fetus, it was the ductus arteriosus. It was an open blood vessel linking the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. And what it did was blood from the right side of the heart that went out with the pulmonary trunk could go through the ductus arteriosus into the aorta and off around the body and avoid going into the lungs because the lungs have got, um, they, in the fetus, the lungs don't receive a lot of blood. In the adult, they receive a lot of blood because they're processing it. But in the fetus, the organ of gaseous exchange, of course, is the placenta. Anyway, so that little connection between those two blood vessels becomes the ligamentum arteriosum after birth because it closes down. And the, the recurrent laryngeal nerve passes around the aorta after the ligamentum arteriosum, if that makes sense. Isn't that cool? But why does a nerve to the larynx go down into the thorax and then back up to the larynx? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. If it had any function in the thorax, you could just use the phrenic nerve for that or the vagus nerve. Why would you, why would you? Well, in the embryo, the future parts of like the face and the head and the neck are kind of simple bulges of tissue. They get called the pharyngeal arches. They used to be called the branchial arches because they look a bit, by, uh, a bit like gills and kind of has a throwback to fish. Anyway, in the embryo, we're quite nice and symmetrical when we start out. We've got um, pharyngeal arches on both sides. Each pharyngeal arch has a, like a block of muscle tissue, a nerve, um, a blood vessel, an artery, you know, uh, and a bit of connective tissue. Um, and those go on to become different things. Um, so the two aortic arches, so the, the, each pharyngeal arch has an aortic arch, but an embryonic one, right? And those aortic arches pass from like the outflow of the heart out laterally to the two dorsal aorti, because there are two. We're nice and symmetrical, right? Anyway. As time goes on and those structures become the various parts of our head and neck, 
the, the, the pharyngeal arch that the recurrent laryngeal nerve is part of it is tied down by its blood vessels and of course the neck gets longer and longer so the the blood vessels that are associated with the recurrent laryngeal nerve because they're both of the same pharyngeal arch they kind of get pulled down into the thorax and the recurrent laryngeal nerve is going up to the larynx but it gets pulled down with them because all the other structures are getting pulled down as the neck extends um, and they can't take another route they're associated with the blood vessels now what happens is of course is that the blood vessel system changes we in the adult or certainly you know, in the fetus and by birth our arterial system is left-sided isn't it the aorta goes off to the left and there's there's a the the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava is on the right side so that our venous system moves to the right side but and our arterial system moves to the left side whereas to begin with we had like symmetrical a pair of aorta and symmetrical veins as well so the veins on the left have to break down as well we're getting a bit away from the recurrent laryngeal nerve aren't we my point is that as the arterial system becomes left-sided there are two arteries and the one on the right disappears because it's not needed so the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right it can rise up so it's only now trapped down by the subclavian artery which is you know part of a blood vessel of an arch a pharyngeal arch that was higher up so that's why they're different on either side and that's why they get pulled down into the thorax and pass back up again um, and this is an example of you know of, of body patterning of of um, of a body pattern being preserved and evolution making small incremental changes over millions of years in that um, all tetrapods I think have this arrangement so the, the most famous example is a giraffe also has a recurrent laryngeal nerve that's like it's really long so the giraffe's recurrent laryngeal nerve is also pulled down into its thorax and then it has to run all the way up that neck <laughs> to get up to its larynx which is really cool and there's also an idea that the dinosaurs probably had to do the same thing because they had the same body plan when they were developing which is like a mad idea it's brilliant so then it is possible to have a non-recurrent laryngeal nerve as in you've got that nerve but it's not taking that route so a very small proportion of the population has that and of course it's associated with abnormal blood vessel development so if the blood vessels are developed differently the, um, the nerve isn't, um, isn't held down so it, it's higher up in the neck also situs inversus right so you can actually have your organs flip the other way situs inversus which means that the recurrent laryngeal nerves are at different heights as well it's all very weird which is why the human body is so good isn't it and and animal uh, bodies generally that's just it's just fantastic okay so what about injury how does it get injured and what are the the ramifications of that well um the recurrent laryngeal nerve can be rarely damaged during surgery the classic exam question is we ask about thyroid surgery because the thyroid gland is covering the larynx and it's covering um, the trachea and the recurrent laryngeal nerves are posterior to the thyroid so in a thyroidectomy when you're trying to remove the thyroid gland the recurrent laryngeal nerve is at risk usually it's fine but you know it's at risk also because it's looping down into the thorax then um, surgery to the lungs removing lymph nodes in this region mean the recurrent laryngeal nerve can be at risk um, and also again we were talking about the phrenic nerve being you know being compressed by potentially being compressed by medial lung tumors again the recurrent laryngeal nerve can be affected by um, conditions pressing on the nerve uh, in the thorax which would then give potentially changes to the voice so watch out for that changes to the voice oh no I've given away my answer to my next question so what would the effects be if you damage one of the recurrent laryngeal nerves well so you've got two recurrent laryngeal nerves innervating muscles on either side so if you damage one of the recurrent, recurrent laryngeal nerves then it's not going to be so easy to control your vocal cords so the most common issue is like a, a weak voice a hoarse voice it's not as easy to phonate and also 
we were talking about coughing, weren't we? You can't close your glottis really effectively, so then it gets <coughs> it's harder to cough and remove things from your airway. So then there's that gives another risk to issues with the upper airway, right? So if you can't close your glottis. Nerves are great, aren't they? The idea that you can like carry this electrical signal through action potentials, you know, through chemical changes, through a really, really long cell and affect something at a distance from the start of that cell. And then also the idea that you can squash it or bang it and get a similar effect. Nerves, very, very cool. Anyway, um, that's it, right? That's the path of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. That's the functions of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Um, the risks um, during surgery that might injure it and then what happens if it gets injured. How can you test for it? I think is it, I think you, I was chatting to an ENT surgeon about this and I think it was a case of you, you ask them to hold their breath for 10 seconds or something and then there's a bit of leakage, something like that. Anyway, look it up, don't trust me, I'm, I'm merely an anatomist, I'm just fascinated by the human body. See you guys next week.